All right, so for running your elect, or I'm sorry, your rectifier for the actual electroforming process, you will need a rectifier. Um, it's got the red and black cables. Um, then you'll need your electroforming bath. Um, I found this really cool jar from a thrift store. It's chipped in a couple places and, you know, it's a little janky. But I really liked that it was a little bit bigger and it came with this lid, which will help the electroforming solution not um, evaporate quite as quickly in between times I'm running the bath. So you will also need three different pieces of pure copper wire. So the first, I have a pretty low gauge, so remember lower numbers um, are thicker wire, so pretty low gauge, I think this is about 8 or 12 gauge pure copper wire. Um, this is the same thing to kind of sit over top of the electroforming bath, and this I didn't say. This is the um, copper coil that you're going to put into the bath for it to draw the copper from. Um, technically, this is, you have an anode and a cathode, and I'm silly and don't know which is which, terminology-wise. So, I'm going to go ahead and take the lid off my electroforming bath. It's full of an electroforming solution. Um, I'm going to go ahead and drop my copper wire down in there. Then... The last piece of copper wire you need is a really high gauge, so a really thin piece of copper wire. Um, and again, it has to be actual, like, pure copper wire, nothing that's coated. Um, if you just go in Michaels and pick up something that looks like copper wire, it probably isn't a lot of copper wire. Um, and then I'm going to make a little loop and do one more little loop here so that my piece can hang from this little makeshift doodad, whatchamacallit. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down in. And the problem I have right now is that when I put it down in the bath, um, it touches the bottom, which I do not want. So I'm gonna straighten it out, make a different spot for my loop, do another loop. I should probably be wearing gloves. Here we are. So when you put it in, you want to make sure that none of the wires are touching each other other than the one that's wrapped around it, obviously. You want to make sure that your piece isn't touching the bottom or any of the coils, which for this piece isn't a challenge, but for some of the more oblong pieces I've made is more difficult. Then you're going to take your two wires here. You're going to attach the red one to... I think this one's the anode, the one that is the copper coil. And then you're going to attach the black clip to the small wire connected to your artwork. Then you can turn your rectifier on and you want to run. Okay. So my understanding is that you essentially want the bottom number to be about 0 0.01 amps per square inch on your piece. So mine was probably about one maybe a little more so i'm gonna turn this dial so that's about a one um one thing i find interesting is you just saw some numbers change a little bit um so sometimes i have to kind of crank it up a tiny bit or kind of fiddle with it to get it to stay and i like to err on the side of it being a touch high as opposed to too low all right, so I'm gonna finish this conversation in our super exciting laundry room here. Um, some things to look for when you come back in about 10 minutes to check your piece um, are the color of your piece right where it connects to the wire, and I'll show you that in a minute. If it looks like it's starting to turn copper, it's good. If it looks really kind of pale and weak, um, Trying to think of how to describe it. If it looks kind of 
gritty maybe is a word I could use, uh, you probably have it set too low. So in that case, I turn it up just a touch and come back in another 20 minutes or so and check it again. If you look at it and it's like brown, it could be set too high. Um, the one time I actually have seen it be set too high, <clears throat> I had too many pieces in there and so I cranked it up higher than I needed to. And what I thought was interesting was one piece came out perfect, but the other two, I pulled them out all at the same time and the copper that was collecting on the wire and on the second two pieces was like really gritty to the point that when I touched it, it just fell apart. So I literally dusted <laughs> the copper off that I could, put it back in the bath and ran it again at a lower setting. And fortunately it worked okay, but um, just some things to look for while you're checking your bath, I guess. It's been all of two minutes, I think, so not much has happened, but we'll come back in a minute and see what we've got going on. All right, so let's take a peek. This is the reason the numbers confuse me, first of all, because I thought initially that the A would stand for amps, and so that would be the number that I'm adjusting, but that number goes up <laughs> as I work. So, I th I don't know. I've been honestly going more by the top number. So for one inch, I set it to 0 0.1 volts or V, I don't know, whatever the top is. For two square inches, I do 0 0.2 and so on. Because the bottom number, like when we left, that said 0 0.01. Now it says 0 0.05 and I have not touched it. So, learning. Now let's go ahead and take a peek. So you can see that the top of the piece where the wire touches it is starting to turn so it's not silver it looks silver in the bath um but it's turning to copper and so far it's looking pretty good um sometimes it'll look a little grittier and if it does i'll turn it up but i'll take that so we're gonna just let it keep going till everything that has the conductive paint on it turns to copper all right still going low and slow let's see why is the flash on oh boy all right so if you look you can still see there's a little black stripe in the back so it's not quite done yet so we're gonna let it keep going um Copper itself is looking a little glittery and maybe chalky, so I'm gonna crank it up a notch or so. Also, it's getting close to my bedtime. Go with that setting and see what it does. All right, it has been about four hours, so let's go ahead and see. So this is the tricky part. From the top, it looks like maybe it's done. And if I could let it go overnight, it would just, I think, make a thicker layer of copper, but I don't really have time to mess with this in the morning. So I'm gonna go ahead and go ahead and see what we've got. We're gonna turn that down, turn this off. I'm gonna unhook. This. Maybe. Mm, not quite done. Alright. So, I could let this go longer, but I don't want to. It is bedtime. So, it has been in here for about five hours. So I'm going to go ahead and turn the knob all the way down first. I turn the system off. I'm going to unhook the wires. And then I'm going to get out my jar of baking soda and water. Um, I initially used to get out like a bowl and mix up baking soda and water for every time I go in the bath. But that just seemed wasteful. So I'm going to try this for a while and see if it gives me any trouble but I think it should work so I'm gonna shut that up I'm gonna carefully open this all right and I'm gonna go ahead and take 
things and you can hear it sizzle so you know it's working yes and it's done so here's what we've got got my Herkimer diamond the copper looks a little light um, it's so good and I find it interesting you can see on the wire about how much copper has collected so I'm gonna set this to the side and then let me show you how I store the rest of this so if I didn't say, the purpose of the baking soda and water is to neutralize the acid that's in the bath. Um, because if we let it sit there, obviously the um, everything would disintegrate. <laughs> so I put some baking soda and water on this paper towel. Um, I don't want to let it drip into the bath. Ooh, and yuck at my gross nasty paint sink. So I'm gonna carefully bring this over here and I'm gonna take my baking soda and water paper towel and wipe off my copper coil. That way the acid isn't sitting on there and it's not um, gonna be chewing it up while it's just sitting around. That would suck. So go ahead. I'm gonna throw this guy away. I'm gonna rinse it to get the baking soda off so that it doesn't start neutralizing things and I don't want it to next time I put it in the bath. Alright, so I'm gonna put this over on the shelf. Last but not least, I can take my copper and pull it off the wire. I keep this in here closer to my bath. Um, so I'm going to hold on to this wire for the next step, which is using the liver of sulfur to add patina. Because this copper looks pretty cool, but it is copper, so I know it's going to patina on its own. So I'm just going to go ahead and control what it does myself and we can go from there. So thanks for watching and yeah, we'll get started on the next video here soon.